It goes 10 from OKC. In what city will you find the Gateway Arch? St. Louis. St. Louis. What is Mr. T's famous catchphrase? I'm a I'm a what is the name of the famous geyser at Yellowstone National Park? Old Faithful. Old Yeller. What singer had the hit? Old Faithful. Maggie May. Maggie May. Uh, dang it, I... <laughs> Melissa Gilbert played Laura Ingalls Wilder on the Little House on the Prairie. Uh, Little House on the Prairie. In which Shakespearean play will you find the line, to be or not to be? Macbeth. Hamlet. John Wayne Probably played Mr. Hamlet. Cogburn in 1969 movie True Grit. Who played him in 2010? The Dude. Uh -huh. Uh, the dude. What's the famous Jeff actor Richardson. laughing at the end of Michael Jackson's song Thriller? Vincent Price. Uh, the musical Mamma Mia is based on the music of what man? Abba. Abba. <laughs> Whose likeness is on the U.S. quarter? George Washington. George Washington. <laughs> Going back to a pass, what singer had the hit Maggie May? Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart. That is correct. That well, is we ran correct. out of time. Well, we ran out of time. Other passes. Tim. And you had two other passes, uh, old yeller. <laughs> and that's a bummer. I'm not laughing at you, Tim. I'm laughing, laughing with, with you. you. Oh, uh, the famous geyser oh, at Yellowstone oh, National Park. Hey, it's if you want to catch the rest of this, go on over to uh, my site. Kayla May, Minute Impossible at YouTube. It's my Friday drive, and we're having a great time. Because the, the clock is ticking. And, old and yeller. we got to keep trying to win. Oh, Wow. Okay. Maggie well, May. Not a thousand bucks, Tim. Oh, here you go. go. The 90 day unlimited membership to Watershed. 90 days is a good deal. I got a bunch of those. You can wash you your get car, the car as much and take that clean car to the Winchester Drive-In. I have a okay, family for today I'm gonna go, for you. 69 I'm, not, I'm going straight because there's a little traffic jam. I'm making it over there. Yeah. So I'm going to go oh, straight man. here and that was fun. spin and get off well, on shield well, and come in. Do with Tim going in the, you know, we went through, I'm trying to come in back, back and pass. In what city will you find the Gateway Arch? Tim got it. Did you? St. Yes. Louis, yeah. The big arch right there on the old Mississippi River. What is Mr. T's famous catchphrase? I pity the fool. I pity the fool. That's right. What is the name of the famous geyser <laughs> at Yellowstone <laughs> National Park? Tim, when you said Old Yeller, I almost lost it. I'm, I'm so proud <laughs> of myself. Do. It is not Old Yeller. It is so Old Faithful. Faithful. Mm -hmm. Okay. What singer had the hit? Maggie May. It was 1971. Yeah, believe it or not. Rod it's Stewart. Long ago. Rod Stewart. And Tim uh, grabbed that one. Coming back on the pass. Melissa Gilbert played Laura Ingalls Wilder on what long-running TV show? That was Little House There's on the hazard. Prairie. Which Shakespearean play? Will you find this the line to, to be or not to, not to be? Hamlet. Hamlet is right. John Wayne. Uh, played Rooster Cogburn in the 1969 movie True Grit. He actually won an Academy Award for that he role. He did. Who played him in the 2010 remake Jeff of True Grit? Jeff the Bridges. Dude. Tim, Jeff Bridges. Uh, the Who's dude, the uh, famous Jeff actor Bridges. laughing at the end of Michael Jackson's Vincent thriller? Price. That's Vincent Price. Vincent Price. The musical Mamma Mia is based on the music of Rob Man. Wood, right? He used to work for 20 Adam. years. And, and whose likeness is on the U.S. border? Water. Without hesitation, Tim Water. said George Washington. How'd Water. you do this morning? 10 out of Tim 10. did not get the thousand bucks, but 10 out of 10. on Monday morning. We play every weekday morning. It's called Thousand Dollar Minute 10. Impossible. It's 710. Seven years of college down, down the drain. drain. Seven years of college down the drain. All right, uh... Let's talk some uh, whatever this morning. First off, this day in history, Huey P. Long, the kingfish, the mighty big senator out of uh, Louisiana was shot and uh, <laughs> they were taken into a hospital and he said, what hospital are you taking me to? And they told him, they go, don't take me there. I appointed all those doctors. <laughs> Meaning they gave him a bribe and he gave him a job. The kingfish, Huey P. Long. Uh, gave the longest speech ever in Senate history. He spoke on something for like 12 hours. Um, he was a socialist. Uh, some people thought he might've got elected president. Uh, maybe they, uh, to keep him from being elected president. Uh, yesterday was, uh, I went back and looked at this, was uh, Buddy Holly's birthday. Buddy Holly would be like 85 years old today yesterday if he hadn't died in that plane crash along with um, anyone anyone 
anyone. The big bopper, Chantilly Lace, uh, and Richie Valens, who was only, uh, Richie Valens was only like 17 or 18 when that happened. Uh, supposedly, Waylon Jennings got bumped off the flight. I don't know whether or not that's true or not, but mama, don't let your babies grow up to fly airplanes. Too soon? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, yesterday was um, Barry Switzer Day in Norman. You know, uh, and I was down in Norman and I was on campus and why I didn't go by Orthello's and, and you know, hang out with, you know, the king got his ring and they were going to crown him. And there was a lot of, a lot of former players there. Joe Washington was there. Uh, Joe Washington was there. Billy Sims, who's everywhere. Jason White, Kel Gundy. But the one that really kind of irks, doesn't irk me, but is that Marcus Dupree was there. Marcus Dupree just, you know, up and left us. Quit. He's a quitter. And he went on, you know, he quit. And he went somewhere else. He went to Miss Old, went to Mississippi State. Southern Miss and tried to get eligible and they told him he'd have to sit out a year which now is like oh I'm in the portal I'm in the portal now I can't play now uh, so he had then he went to the USFL and he signed a, a five year five million dollar contract what people don't know is a lot of that money was deferred and to listen to his to his manager, Ken Farley, say, you know, he got a little something, something. Didn't last me long. I spent it all. And, uh, you know, Marcus got hurt. Got hurt bad. Tore his knee up bad. He did make a comeback a few years later and play a year in the NFL. And then I was playing with the Rams, and he was the, their leading rusher for the preseason. I watched him, and he looked good. But... You know, I don't know if they, you know, why they would cut him when he's your leading rusher, but they did. And it could be because they knew he didn't have any heart. Uh, you can watch the best that never was. I can tell you a little, really kind of good Marcus Dupree story is, um, I used to live next door to Shirley Vaughn, who was the recruiting coordinator for OU back during the King's era. And I'm out on the front porch one day and I, and this, uh, Coronado rolls up to Shirley's house and uh, I go inside and I call Phil who lived there and I said, Phil, who's at, who's over at your house? He said, Marcus Dupree and Danny Bradley. I said, sweet. So I kind of waited and they came out and I went over there and talked to them and got some autographs and everything. But what were they, what was, uh, what were they doing over there at Shirley's house? I wonder. They were getting an NIL deal is what they were doing. <laughs> Shirley was the bag man. Shirley was the one that passed out money to all the players. And people say, well, you don't really know that. And I do. Because uh, her son and I took Buster Rhymes an envelope full of money one time up at Rose State College when he had been when he had been kicked off the team and could only come back if he regained his eligibility by getting an associate's degree from Rose State which he did. And I saw him up there because I was going to Rose State at the time. And I saw him up there and fill it. And we pulled him in the parking lot and and Buster's just standing out there waiting. You know, the man with luster. Um, oh, another good story. This is a Buster Rhyme story. Over there, and this is 19, probably 1984. And uh, Shirley had a, had a real nice pool and a pond. Pond would be good for you. So, uh, I'm over there hanging out, Buster and Tony Rayburn come over. And we're going to go swimming. So, we're out there swimming, clowning around, got the jacuzzi going. We're in the jacuzzi. And, uh, and Phillip's talking about, we used to jump off Phillip's roof, roof into the pool. And, uh, and Buster's like, man, there's no way you guys would be jumping off that roof. And I'm like, you know, it ain't that big a deal, Buster. I can, you know, he goes, I don't think you can do it. And I'm like, Buster, watch me. So, I get on the roof. And jump. It's not that far. It's not that big a deal. And he was like going, man, you guys are crazy, man. Buster. You had to know Buster. And I, I didn't really know Buster. Man. I didn't know Buster at all. But uh, so we're sitting there and about 10 minutes later, Buster's missing. Where'd Buster go? We have no idea where Buster is. None. None whatsoever. So we're just sitting there chilling. And all of a sudden you hear this god-awful scream. 
and you see nothing but the but the longest black legs and arms flailing through the air as Buster jumps off the roof <laughs> into the swimming pool and he gets out and he goes, man, I ain't never doing that again. And I'm like, oh, Buster, come on, man. And Tony Rayburn was there and he said he said he was crazy and that he ain't, he had never jump off that roof. Uh, Buster went on to play about five or six years in the NFL. Um, and then I think he fell on some hard times, which a lot of people do. Buster was a great guy, great sooner. Uh, no telling how good Buster could have been had we had we just thrown the ball. He could catch it, and he was just a just a as the king would say, he was a long strider. He could really get out there and go, and he could run back punts. He was a, just an all around great athlete. Uh, Tony Rayburn, is it Tony Rayburn? Am I, is it? Yeah, I think it's Tony Rayburn. Um, number 35, he played on the 85 National Championship team. Buster had graduated the year before and missed out on it. Um, I believe Tony Rayburn ended up getting hurt maybe in training camp in an NFL spot or at the end of his OU season. But this is what I heard was that, that Tony had, a, had, had, a, had gotten an insurance policy just in case he did not make it to the NFL. Um, and ended up getting a lot of money. And I don't know where Tony Rayburn is today, but he was a good guy. And he was a, he was a hell of a, he would, he would come up and just whack you. So, uh, but the King got his crown yesterday and it's pretty good. Uh, I'm trying to think if I really have any good Buster. I mean, Barry Switzer stories. Oh, uh, one time I, this is back in, I don't know, probably 86 or 87. And, uh, I came home and there was a big Cadillac in the driveway. And I, you know, it's like, I know what a Cadillac was, but it was just strange to see one in my driveway. And I walk in and Barry Switzer was at my house. Uh, he had come over to see my dad. Shirley had told him that he thought that my dad had a copy or had a tape of the 85 National Championship game on VHS. Because, you know, I, why didn't Barry have one? I don't know why Barry didn't have one. But Barry and Bobby Bell were over there picking up a tape and they were sitting in there shooting the breeze, having some scotch and waters. And I came in, saw the King and uh, turned right and went to my bedroom and shut the door. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I knew my dad didn't want me in there drooling over the Barry, Barry Switzer story. But um, any other little Barry Switzer sightings? Oh, I saw him at, a, at the, when Joe Washington was having a book signing at uh, when he came out with the Seven Secrets of the Silver Shoes. Uh, or the secrets of the silver shoes. I walked in the bookstore and Barry Switcher was standing there, just standing there. And I walked right up to him and I go, excuse me, sir, uh, do you know where the historical fiction section is? <laughs> and I got the straightest face. You can't imagine how straight my face was. Straight as could be. And he looked at me and he goes, he goes, no, I don't, but I can find somebody to help you. And I started laughing and the guy standing there goes, do you know who this is? And I'm like, uh, hang on, hang on, let me guess. Uh, Jimmy Johnson? <laughs> I didn't do that. I go, yes, I know who this is. This is this is very Switcher. I said I was just going to see if he knew knew anything about books. So and that was about it. And uh, we stood in line there and to get little Joe's autograph. And uh, I stood in line with former Sooner great Glenn Clendon Thomas, who was a you know kind of a hulking of a man. He had on a big long coat and he was just as nice as guys could be. And I was just fortunate enough to be standing there in line. And he just went on and on about playing football for OU, about Bud Wilkinson and his time at OU and how much he appreciated it. And uh, I talked to him and asked him a bunch of questions. And and uh, and he told me a story about uh, when he played in the NFL that, that after a game, Jim Brown came up to him and told him, you are the best and hardest tackler I've ever had to play. So Clendon Thomas could, Clendon Thomas could play. He was a great player. I got a nice autograph picture of him down at the office on the wall. Well, we're here, folks. Uh, I never did get to, I'm, I'm just not bringing in Toby Rowland anymore. I'm just too entertaining myself. Old yellow, old yellow. If you missed it, guy's on a tear, man. He's on a tear. Uh, what's the name of that world famous geyser in, uh, <laughs> in Yellowstone Park, and he goes, you already know this, Old Yeller. 
I'm laughing. I'm trying not to laugh, but uh, then he quickly corrected himself, but you can't shove it back in. And today's Friday. Tomorrow we play SMU. Play at 5 o'clock. It'll be on ESPN+. Plus. I'll be at the game, and I'll be at the lot probably around 11. Got a lot of good games tomorrow. And Nebraska plays Colorado tomorrow at 11. Uh, let's see how let's see how they do. Uh, they play at home, and I watch Nebraska play, and they're not, they're not very good. But maybe Minnesota's got a better defense, and maybe Nebraska's gotten a lot better. Uh, I don't know how much of... Excuse me. I don't know how much of a defense Colorado's got. They gave up 42 and had a pick down at the end zone that I guess basically saved them the game. So uh, Last night, the Chiefs. <laughs> Sorry, Patrick Mahomes. You need to get some receivers that can catch. Uh, former Oklahoma tight end quarterback Blake Bell did catch a touchdown pass. At least he didn't drop them like everybody else did. I'm at work and I got to go. So... Uh, I'll see you on the next one.